Hello everybody. I don't know what to say, but four new craters opened this morning at around 9 p.m. They all seem to be a part of the same crack which formed in between the original fissure and the fourth fissure, or in the areas marked in red. New fissures or craters opening is no surprise now, but the locations are always a surprise, which can be problematic. But at the time of the opening of these new craters, not many people were around. And there was a team of scientists about to do research in that exact area, but just as they were starting, they saw these new craters being born. Could have gone differently if more people were around, since these new craters were rather feisty at their birth. Here you can see three of the newly formed craters. The weather here in Iceland has been amazing the last couple of days, so the gas pollution has again used the chance to take a stroll downtown, and people are recommended to take extra care now. Have windows shut and ventilations off just in case. People with heart problems are recommended to have their medicine ready, since they are now the ones who are the most vulnerable to the gases. If I don't upload again in two days, I'm dead. A lot of interesting data has come in, which we'll be going over. First, I want to show you this time lapse of the new crater's opening that was caught by MPS livestream camera. As I said earlier, the new craters were feisty at the beginning, and still are, pumping out a constant stream of lava with no official numbers of the lava flow though. Speaking of the lava flow, it has decreased quite a lot since the formation of the second and third fissure. When those fissures opened, the lava flow increased by 50%, from around 5 cubic meters per second to 8 or 10. It's now back to around 5 cubic meters per second. But the eruption decided that it had to be changed this morning, since after the formation of the new craters, it seems that the activity has shot back up, by maybe 1 or 2 cubic meters per second. You can see that by just looking at the livestream cameras, that all the craters are much more active now, as of the recording of the video, than earlier today. Pay close attention to the crater marked with red. This was it earlier today, looking almost dead. The most interesting news though are from Thorvaldur Thordansson, professor of volcanology. He's done some research into what could possibly be happening under the volcano in the magma dike and how much lava is being pumped into the dike per second. It's estimated that 15 cubic meters of magma is pumped into the dike per second and the eruption is only pumping out 8 to 10 cubic meters of lava per second, which means that there is still room for 5 more cubic meters to be thrown out per second, suggesting that another fissure is likely to open, since the eruption likes to have the same input and output. So either a new fissure will open, or the activity in the existing fissures will increase, like we've been seeing tonight. So you still have to sit inside and watch the live streams until you catch a fissure opening. No, just check now then. But what could happen? Well, Thorvaldur is also into speculating, and he came up with some very interesting scenarios we could see. It's regarding the dike and the flow into it. If the flow increases, new fissures will open to try to even out the input and output, and the eruption will become bigger. If the flow stays the same as it is now, not many changes will occur, and the eruption would continue as long as that flow continues. 
but if the flow decreases, we would see the decreased activity, and in the end, it would probably cause the eruption to come to a complete halt. I think it's worth mentioning that our speculations age pretty well from the last video, as we suggested that the pattern would continue with the next fissure opening to the south of the previous one. You can check the last video under the speculations and prediction section to see it in full detail. That was all pure luck of course, but still pretty cool. Here's a map of all the craters and fissures. The straight line continues and the separation between craters continues to decrease. It may well be, if the scenario where the magma flow into the dike increases, we'll see almost a continuous crater throughout all of this line. That is not considered a likely scenario, instead it would be more likely to have new fissures forming to the north, and if we take our old pattern into account, the next fissure or crater should open to the north of these new ones, so we'll just have to wait and see. If you want to check out this 3D render of the area that looks awesome, I'll leave a link to it in the description so you can check it out. Anyways, that's it. Hope you all enjoyed. If you want to share the video with others, you can like it, since that does the trick. And by the way, if you are watching now as I uploaded the video, I recommend checking out the livestream camera because it looks awesome. Hope to see most of you guys next time, and thanks for watching.